abstract classes. Uh, we're going to talk about abstract class. Remember in your English class when you had to learn the difference between an abstract noun and a concrete noun, uh, where an abstract noun is one that uh, it doesn't exist in the real world, while concrete things are things that do exist in the world. So bravery is abstract, while puppies are concrete. Um, it's the same idea for Java. So we can have classes in Java that are abstract, and what that specifically means is that you cannot create an instance of an abstract class. And the way you create them is just like a regular class. Uh, we're going to call this a widget class, and then just going to click here on the abstract button there, click finish, and there you go. So I just created an abstract class. And all it does is it adds this keyword here, abstract, to the class. And so what that means is that now if I do a widget w is a new widget, it's not going to like that because widget is abstract. So it's going to say you cannot instantiate the type widget because it's abstract. If I got rid of that, then it would work just fine. And there it is. So that would be fine. But we want an abstract for now. And within an abstract class, it's, it's just like a regular class, mostly. You, you can say public in Accord, um, public in Y core. Uh, but you can also hey, you can have methods too, like public get X core. Uh, public int get x score. And, uh, but you might also have the uh, public abstract, uh, say void do action. Oops, I didn't want to do that. That's what I wanted to do. So you can have also abstract methods. So you can have regular methods like this one. But you can also have abstract methods that don't have a body. So this is just like in the interface declarations. Uh, all you have is the signature of the method and the abstract keyword. Abs abstract. And so, um, yeah, that's not going to work because that's abstract. So this is fine. And that you can have any number of abstract methods like that. And so you might be wondering, okay, well, if I do that, then you know, how do I use this? So what's the point of an abstract class if I cannot instantiate it? Well, the real reason we have these is so that we can then write another class. So we're going to call it the button class. And that is going to extend uh, the widget class. And that is not going to be abstract. So the button class extends my widget class. Uh, and you see what it did. Java uh, Eclipse already put in this one method, the do action method, because it knows, hey, I'm going to extend the widget class. The widget class has one abstract method, do action. So thus, you button, you must implement these methods. So Basically, an abstract method within, a, within an abstract class works exactly the same as an interface. Uh, it's just you know, a method that must be implemented, in this case, by the class that extends the widget. Right? So, because of that. so that means that I have to put some code in here to do that. And then going back up here, of course, I, can, I still cannot implement, instantiate the widget class. You know? Uh, you cannot do that. No. That's the whole point of an abstract class is that that is impossible. But I can, however, do this. I can create a new instance of a button. And that will be fine. That will work just fine. So why do we have abstract classes? Well, this is when you're writing bigger programs, um, you might use them. So generally, an abstract class will be like the top, and you have a if you have a hierarchy of classes, the top one might be an abstract class because you don't want anybody to instantiate that class. There, you know, there's some more complicated reasons 
why you might want that. Uh, so for small programs, it doesn't make sense, but when you get to building bigger programs, they come in handy.